When Sidney Poitier arrived in Hollywood, the rules were already written, but he rewrote them, forever changing the way African Americans would be depicted on the big screen. The best way to understand the legacy of Sidney Poitier is that he is the man in between. He's between black and white. He's a man between representing the system and trying to subvert it. Sidney Poitier was born three months premature in Miami, Florida in 1927, but spent most of his childhood in the Bahamas. The future in Nassau looked so bleak for the son of a poor tomato farmer that his parents sent him off to Miami to live with his older brother. Things weren't much better stateside. With a limited education and no real prospects, young Sidney made his way up to New York. Looking for work in the big city, he read an ad that mentioned the American Negro Theater in Harlem was looking for actors. He showed up and auditioned, but with his thick accent and difficulty reading, he was immediately rejected. He took a job as a dishwasher and worked hard to shake his accent by listening to the radio while a coworker helped him with his reading. His persistence and determination paid off when he was accepted by the theater six months later. As the 40s came to a close, Sidney made the jump from the stage to the screen. Performances in the racially charged No Way Out and 1955's Blackboard Jungle made him one of the most talked about young actors in film. By 1958, he earned an Academy Award nomination for his role in The Defiant Ones. It was a kind of allegory on civil rights in the late 1950s that black and white could not survive together unless they held on to each other. In 1959, while his movie career continued to thrive, he made a triumphant return to theater in the stage production of A Raisin in the Sun, the first play ever written by a black playwright to be performed on Broadway. In 1964, he became the first African-American to win the Best Actor Academy Award for his work in Lilies of the Field. It is a long journey to this moment. His starring turn as a black man helping a white sheriff solve a crime in a racist southern town in the 1967 film In the Heat of the Night further cemented his reputation as one of the finest actors in the business. Poitier's work in the 60s, often portraying sophisticated and dignified black characters standing tall in the face of prejudice and social injustice, helped reshape the way African-American actors were seen in film. In film after film after film, he seeks roles that are not race-based or defined by color, but that transcend it. What's striking to me is his deep commitment to social justice, and to civil rights. Poitier continued his path into uncharted territory, playing a black man dating a white woman in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. After cornering the market for the best leading roles available to African Americans in the 60s, he began to work behind the camera more and more in the 70s. He scored a huge hit directing the 1980 Gene Wilder Richard Pryor comedy smash Stir Crazy. For many years, it was the highest grossing film ever directed by an African American. After taking a hiatus from acting for most of the 80s, Poitier returned to occasional roles in films, while concentrating mostly on writing three successful autobiographical books. More than any other popular artist, Poitier helped to contribute toward an America that moved from Jim Crow to the possibility of a non-racial future. That's his great strength, and that's how he'll be remembered.